well, you know, we just can't leave well enough alone. So, we're going to redo the throttle pedal a little bit. I don't like the way this linkage works. It's a little bit sticky and draggy. This throttle pedal works by pulling on the cable with this arm. This arm has to slide in this slot. And if everything is well lubricated, it works all right, but it's a little jumpy off the idle when it pulls on the cable. The other thing is, is it pulls on the cable this way and the cable's coming from the motor. So it has to be either looped or it has to run around a pulley to get the direction to pull the right way. We're hoping to overcome all this by using a bell crank and getting the direction to pull the right way and getting it to pull a little smoother, come off idle a little bit easier without that jump. Hopefully this idea works well, if it works at all. So we're going to completely redo it. I've uh, screwed the throttle pedal to a board to see exactly where I need to set it and, uh, well, screwed around for a while. All right, to make sure that the linkage I build on the throttle pedal has enough travel, I'm going to measure the travel here at the carburetor. And I'm lining this up with the edge of, at the one inch mark. I'm probably going to use this hole, which is going to give me less travel. But I want to make sure I got plenty of travel in all my linkages. So we're going to go with this edge as our overall measurement. If we start at the one, it goes over to about three and a quarter. That gives us about two and a quarter. If you look at the edge of this hole, it might be at right about the three inch mark. And when it comes forward, it's a quarter inch fast. So that gives me about one and three quarter is all I need for this. But we're going to go with the two and a quarter dimension. That way we know we've got plenty of travel. And we can always adjust the stops on the throttle pedal to make sure that we've got the travel we need. And when it's wide open, you're standing on the pedal. You're not actually pulling on the cable and end up breaking the cable off. Came up with some drawings that look nothing like what I'm going to make, more than likely. But we're going to make this thing a little smoother, operate a little better, and have a little better range of motion instead of needing to be way up here and then way down here with your foot to get full travel. We're going to get it to run about in this range right here, hopefully. Well, we're going to cut all our parts out of this, and hopefully we can get it welded to this piece of cast aluminum. But to our advantage, this is all going to be on the bottom, so if it looks a little bit ugly, we'll be all right. And we have the major components. Well, you know, normally I like to weld things together before I find out that they're not going to work at all, but this time I thought I'd do something a little bit different and answer my phone. Well, I answered the phone and then my buddy that owns the airboat showed up. So, uh, well, it's now the next day and we're pressing on with actually getting something done here. What I'm going to do is actually test it to make sure that it moves through its entire range of motion and doesn't hit anything. And it seems like it's actually going to work. So I think we can weld this thing together. Everything seems to clear. I think that might work. And luckily, what I've ended up with on the throttle pedal linkage is if I start out with it lined up with the one, pressing down on the throttle pedal all the way, even though this isn't the rod, I'm gonna use this rod's a little too small for the holes, it ends up nearly at the three and a half inch mark. Hey, you have to trust me on that one. You can't really see it down in there. But I think that's going to work. And as I said, we can adjust the stops as needed to get the travel that we need. Here's where we are, or is, or whatever. I've got a little spacer in there. I'm going to weld this on, and that's going to be turned into a hook for this cable to cable end to lock down into. And then I have to have a way to hold this cable down here, and I've decided that two arms coming back like this and clamping onto the cable here so that as this swings through its arc, the cable can kind of follow it a little bit so it doesn't come over a hard edge and fray. 
I'm going to take this little piece of square tube right here, drill a couple holes in it, make a cut in it, and make a clamp out of that. You'll see it all in a minute. Now, if I've selected the right size drill bit, this should go through there. Just barely. Nope. I think I need to go just a little bit bigger with the drill bit. And if you're not judging this yet, you obviously don't know how it really is. I don't know, it might qualify as a part. How you like that jig? That is the best in the world, ain't it? Yeah. Don't do what I do, I have no idea what I'm doing. There's our slot. Eh, not too bad. I think it might work. And there's our slot to drop our cable end down into. And I think that just might work. And another quick check to see how everything works. Got to get the right length bolt for it, put in the uh, quarter inch rod for this, which I may put an adjustable thread on the end of that. So far, so good. Well, here's hoping I have all the parts on here that I need, because I'm about to solder an end on this thing. So I have deburred this before I put it on, because they are pretty rough when they come out of the package. I've slid one of these little tiny ferrules over the end of it and I'm going to put a ball of solder on the end and I'm just using the solder that I have. I'm not even sure what uh, percent tin it is or anything like that. But I did the other end, locked a pair of vice grips onto it, gave it a good foot of slack and yanked on it a couple times and it did not even budge. So plenty strong for a throttle cable. So let's see how this works out. I've cleaned off the end of the cable with a little bit of parts cleaner and now I'm just going to fray out the end of the cable. I have quite a bit of room to work with so I can fray a fair amount of cable, uh, maybe just a little over an eighth of an inch here that I'm fraying out. But that's where it gets all its strength from is all the solder holding onto all these little pieces of cable spread out. Got it frayed out real nice here with a little bit of flux already on the end of it. Should work well, I hope. Worked good on the last one anyway. Got a little bit of solder laying in the spoon. A little bit of heat underneath of it. And presto, it melts. It looks like almost enough solder. and dip the end into it. She sucks right up into there. Try not to wiggle it around too much. Get my arm out of the way. Try not to wiggle it around too much. It'll cool off. Come on, cool down. It's way too hot. All right, I got that way too hot because I'm having to hold it way too long for it to cool off. And I'm wiggling it as it cools, so that may mess up the solder job, so I might have to redo it. And we have a fairly decent ball on the end of it that should hold inside of this. What I'm going to do now is try to make this somewhat round and somewhat centered on the cable. Once I get it to fit down inside of there, it'll be done. Well, it will drop in there now. Fine tune it a bit with a file. Get rid of the little high spots and even them up with the low spots. 
and we're going to round off the edges of it so it doesn't stick up above the barrel on the sides, drag on anything. But that should be close. We're getting there. And that should work, as long as it's solid enough. And testing. Well, that's a throttle cable. That should be strong enough to open a carburetor. Well, that worked out pretty dang good. The throttle pedal has a whole lot less travel, and it operates way smoother. I've got a few other airboat videos, as well as videos of some of the other projects that I'm working on. Check them out. Like, subscribe, share, and as always, thanks for watching.